This is going to be a video on toaster. This is uh, not to be a just a first glance at. I would advise reading over Boride's uh, initial video on the steps in order to do it. And after giving it a few tries, watch this video just so you start to get a bit of a handle on how uh, toaster works. Uh, but with that, let's just get started on this video. So first part is just getting up on the gate. You'll want to build up Gold Dash first. And uh, our first thing is to land on this ledge here. So landing on this ledge isn't that hard. Um, you want to be coming in at an angle. And something I personally found helpful is to make sure you don't run into the gate itself. So try to move where you're going to land on this part without running into the wall. Um, and that's really all I have to say on that. Um, lots of people do this in different ways. Just find something that's comfortable for you. The next thing is after you jump on that, just jump onto the top of the gate and then from there onto here with Gold Dash. Uh, once you're on here, you can run forward and then jump to the right. And now we finally get to the real meat of the trick. So the first part of this is we're going to be running with Gold Dash and there is a triangle here that looks a bit like this. Well, that's way too big, actually, but uh, let me try again here. So it looks a bit like this. Um, and we want to run almost but not quite to the tip of this triangle. When we get to almost the tip of this triangle, I'm going to jump out to the left. And I mean left. There is no, there is nothing else. There is only left. And that's because this whole trick revolves around escaping the jump barrier, where when you are over this rocky collision, the game doesn't let your jump button work. So while we're on this triangle, our jump button works, but actually when we jump off to the left, it will stop working until we're about over this path. So let's just uh, see what that looks like. So running forward, I'm going to jump to the left. And now at this point, with this camera angle at least that I use, you can see that Ami is pretty visually over uh, the path area, the green, no longer over here. And once Ami gets that far left, you want to double jump this direction. Um, so that's the that's the first part of the trick. Um, I am not going to edit this video, so this will be a little bit choppy, um, since it's going to be pretty hard to actually execute the trick um, in parts like this. So let me just get back up here. So I'm going to jump to the left, and now I'm going to jump back. And when I jump back, I'm specifically doing something very careful here. So our goal is to land on the slope over here. And the slope we care about looks a little bit like this. And this slope itself has sort of four quadrants. There's uh, kind of like this. Our goal is to get to the back um, quadrant, like as far back as possible. And that's part of why it's important when you originally jump off the magic triangle over here that you can still jump on. You want to be as far forward on that as possible because you need to be as far forward on this slope as you can be. So our goal is to land on this back part of the slope and to land on that back part of the slope approximately perpendicular to the direction of the slope. So right there I actually didn't go far enough. I landed in the quadrants there, I landed in this quadrant over here. And what happened right there is exactly why you don't want to land here. This quadrant, you will often get completely stuck. And while you can recover it, it is significantly harder and not a consistent way of doing the trick. So let's just get back up there. Running forward. So my goal is to land all the way to back. That, that's about the point where I want to land. That's about the back right area. Um, that's the goal. So like I'm saying, though, you really want to land perpendicular to the direction of the slope. The slope is going about this direction. So you want to be headed somewhere in like this direction to this direction. You don't have to be exactly perpendicular, but the more you are, the better. And the reason for that is complicated, but basically it gives you the easiest way of getting a sliding ground tackle out in SGT, um, while also letting you keep your speed um, and actually having time to get a tackle out. 
but in general, when trying to do sliding ground tackles, you want to be perpendicular to the slope you're landing on. So that's our goal right here. And so as you can see there, the slide happens pretty easily. So the next part of what happens is I did a tackle out to the left, did a tackle jump out here, and then I'm just swinging back around here. We actually don't head that far forward to our next slope, so you can really take your time swinging around here um, because it's just, uh, you don't want to be too far forward on this next slope either. You don't want to completely miss the slope or the very edge of the slope won't work either. So this next slope we're working with is right here. It's this one. And our goal is to basically land anywhere in like this region. It's pretty big. Uh, this is by far the easiest part of the trick. And our goal is to once again, you wanna, you wanna try to land perpendicular to the slope. So the slope is headed about this direction. So our goal is to, you know, somewhere in this general area. Doesn't have to be exact. Somewhere in this range. And from there, we're gonna do a sliding ground tackle straight out this way. So that's gonna look like this. So this next part of the trick, we are finally gonna go to our last landing, which is on this little rocky outcrop over here. Now, if you look at the rocky area over here, you'll notice that it actually juts out, but then it doesn't like stick out like the rest of it does where it has like slope sticking out. And because of that, we can hug this rock a lot tighter, and we actually need to. So for this one, you really don't want to be going super far out to get out of the jump barrier, and instead, you know, be, be willing to stay decently close to this rock. Finally, right here, the slope, you can't actually see the direction it's facing. You really can't. Um, but what I will tell you is that it's about this direction. So our goal is to land at about this direction. Um, Right there, that wasn't very perfect, and I actually wasn't able to make it because I lost my speed. Um, but that, that is the basic idea of the trick. So let's, uh, let's go back and just go over it again and see what else I have to say. Once again, jumping up here. Sometimes you miss. This is a very hard trick. Do not, do not feel bad about it taking a long time to, to be able to get this for the first time. It is difficult. Jumping out to the right, running forward. Jumping out over here, landing over here. All right, I think I actually need to stop brushing in the middle since it's gonna be, uh, that does mess up my flow of doing the trick, um, my muscle memory. So once again, going over here. One thing you might notice there is I used R3 to rotate the camera there, um, which is faster than brushing. And for me, it makes it easier to rotate the camera so I can see what I'm doing for this last part. Uh, but it's really up to you how you want to do it. So hopefully this time this actually works. Um, there's a very important part that I didn't mention uh, before, um, which is that when you're going from this slope to this slope, they're very far away. And you need to make sure you are not um, double jumping quickly at all. You need to delay your double jump significantly. If you don't, you'll get what's called a hard landing. And a hard landing, you will take significantly longer uh, before the game lets you input a tackle. And because of that, you just won't be able to do a sliding ground tackle before you just fall off the rocky, the rocky outcrop over here. So that's, uh, that's basically why. But when you do get this last one, land there, and then just do a tackle jump out here. And just, your goal is just to get on top of the gate over here. Um, doing this last part is by far the hardest part of the trick. Landing here and doing that is, I would say, the hardest part. Um, in terms of just this sliding ground tackle, it's not very kind. Sometimes you'll get stuck and it just feels unfair. Um, but there really isn't much more I can say about that. It's similar to landing on top of the rock with uh, CC skip, where when you uh, get good at the trick and you've done it a lot, landing on top of the rock isn't that crazy of a thing to do, but really trying to get across how to do it, I can't really say much more than try to land perpendicularly and be willing to experiment a little and try not to get too frustrated because it is hard. Um, but yeah, once you're here, you can just jump down, jump and tackle down to land in the loading zone behind. But there's some more things to still talk about, so let's get back here. 
Or if there's not anything else to talk about, it's always good to have uh, one clean showing here. Jumping over to the right. Jump left. Jump up right. Um, one thing you want to... You can land on the front of these and still get out of sliding ground tackle, but it's just harder to get out the tackle. It's a lot tighter. Um, so it's easier to land in the back area um, than landing in the front. Uh, another thing that not super relates to this trick, since we're never jumping um, on these slidey slopes here, but when you are um, when you are jumping versus tackling, tackling is a delayed input. You cannot jump. Uh, you can jump after you land much faster than you can tackle after you land. It's like a, it's a few frames. Um, it's definitely significant. So. That's part of why, uh, if you say if you have a rhythm for say labyrinth skip on Oni Island when you're jumping around the mountain, um, that timing for the tackle won't work. You have to make sure that you're uh, you're aware of that. So right here, I did our three, and now I'm coming at it. For this one, this is by far the easiest sliding ground tackle to get. You really don't have to worry too hard about the exact specifics of what you're doing. Uh, make sure you're cutting it pretty close to this rock. Double jump late. Uh, my goal, in general, when I'm aiming here, is about this black spot right here. This black little spot here, my goal is to land there, you know, after double jumping late, um, you know, perpendicular to the slope. That's that's my general goal. Um, yeah, uh, there is one other thing I should mention right there. Uh, I did lose some of my speed when going for the sliding ground tackle, and I was still able to make it. And... One important part of that is when you lose your speed for the sliding ground tackle, you are over the jump barrier for longer. So you need to make sure you wait to jump um, if you lose speed. Uh, basically try to jump out of a tackle as late as possible. You can actually jump out of a tackle really late without uh, with, well, without just you know falling down and not being able to do a mid-air ground jump at all. And one really easy way to see that is on the ground, if you are able to jump out of the tackle before seeing the flash of light, then you can do that in the air too. So when you do a tackle jump like that, right, that's really late, right? That's really late, but you can still do it. So yeah. So let's just do uh, let's just do one or two more clean attempts, and then I'll think that'll be it for the video. Right there, you see I actually landed a lot higher than on that uh, little black dot, and it still works. So there actually is a lot of area around there that you can land on and have the final sliding ground tackle work. It's more just uh, getting used to the angle needed to have it work. We'll do, we'll do one more successful one, and I will... Oh. I am playing on PC right now, so that uh, this video could have input viewer. That does mess me up a little bit uh, for some of the stuff. It feels a little weird. Uh, I, I think the input delay is actually slightly different, which is a little annoying. Um, but... Uh, I felt having input delay or input viewer was important since um, I've tried to do hand cam in the past, but I personally prefer input viewers to that anyway. And it always felt a little awkward. So right here I lost speed, but I was still able to recover it with a late jump out of the tackle. And wasn't able to quite make it work. But still a, still a good attempt. You can jump around the rock a little bit there to uh, avoid getting targeted by the scroll uh, if you're doing this at night. Oh. 
I think I'll, I think I'll do it a few more times. There's no harm in having uh, more attempts being shown, I suppose. You know, I, I think I'll go out here. So if you have any questions on how to do this trick, if you're struggling with anything that uh, I didn't say here, feel free to mention in the comments or pop into the uh, speedrunning Discord, and uh, either I or someone else would be happy to answer your question.